also get this for you to also get all the materials from today and sure you fill the attendance form okay so my colleagues would share the attendance from form from time to time go into the chat fill the form so you get all the details i'll be sharing with you today but let's get started let's jump into the main meat of our session today which is getting into the non-coding and the non-math tech career path, the high paying jobs, the areas where you can dive into, even though you have no mathematics background and you also don't have any, you don't want to code at this point in your career. I've interacted with so many people and some of them are 40, they're 45 and they want to transition. Hey, I love the money that is in tech. I want to go to Canada and compete for the best jobs available but I'm not ready to code. And of course, there are career paths available for you. And we'll walk through this together in the next one and a half hours. Well, first of all, who is Ted Analytics? And what are we all about? So we are the leading educational technology company. And the focus for us is helping Africans in Africa and Africans in the diaspora to get into the tech ecosystem. And we do this by providing you with the best in class premium technology skills in different areas, spanning from business analysis to data analytics, to data science, cybersecurity, financial analytics, and so on and so forth. And over the last four years, we've been able to help over 2,000 people across different regions transition from their first jobs, no background, no tech, no tech knowledge, no tech background into the tech ecosystem. So how have we done this? And what has made us so successful? Okay, and I'm gonna share that with you as well. Now, most of the time people feel that because I have no experience, I can't transition into tech because I don't have a computer science degree, I can't also transition. And these are some of the misconceptions we're gonna to discuss today. And I'll start with myself. So the assumption would be that, oh, Adesa, who is leading the session today is has you know technology background, has a background, has educational knowledge in computer science, computer engineering. My first degree was in industrial chemistry. So you see this gentleman right here, he studied industrial chemistry, just like so many of you who would also get to transition. And you realize you have people who have done psychology, physiology, they've studied medicine, you know, and so on and so forth. But they come out of the university and learn the skills. The reason why it's easy to transition, irrespective of your educational background, is because the tech ecosystem is heavily skill-based. Once you can learn the skill, you can gain the experience, you get the job. And I'll be showing you practical steps of how you can do that today. So I'm a technology expert with a decade experience in data analytics and management consulting. Like I said, my first degree was in industrial chemistry, nothing related to tech. And my very first job was in management consulting. So I didn't have a tech technology related experience at the very start, but then I decided to transition. Just like so many of you are also nurturing that idea. How do I move? from being a customer service professional somewhere in the UK to becoming a financial analyst or a business analyst or a data analyst, as the case might be. Over the last four years, using the platform of Tenalytics, we've been able to help over 2,000 people to make their journey from their previous career path with no experience, no knowledge in the tech ecosystem into getting their very first jobs. And I'll share some of their success stories with you today as we move on during our session. My experience spans across data science, working in the UK and in the US as a data analyst, working with one of the largest energy conglomerates in sub-Saharan Africa, and also as a data analytics consultant with FITC, owned by the CBN, the Bankers Committee, and so on and so forth. My experience spans across five different sectors. And this is also the beauty of taking the skills you have as a tech talent into other industries and sectors. So I started my um, professional journey 
in data analytics in the financial services sector. Then I moved into sports. I moved into educational technology. I moved into energy and then into automobile while I was in the UK. So how did I do it? How do you take the skills you've learned as a data analyst, for example, into multiple sectors? So these are some of the things I'm also going to walk you through before the end of our session. I currently reside in Alberta, Canada. I moved to Canada in January, specifically for a mission. And the mission is to help more Africans in Canada to make that transition as well. We've been in the UK for the last three years. We have a very good stronghold in the UK. Now the next step for us is to come to Canada. I moved to Canada in January this year and we are making strides within the Canadian market. And I'll share a little bit about that as well as we move on. Okay, now let's go into the focus areas for today. The first phase would involve us talking about the in-demand tech technology roles, okay? The ones that require coding, the ones that require mathematics, and then I'll break them down into no coding, no math, and then math and coding, okay? Then I'm going to show you practical steps on how to get started in those career paths. Practical steps on how to get started. Getting started is one of the is also one of the most difficult steps for people, and the reason is over information. Everybody watches stuff on YouTube. We listen to what people have to say, even though they have no knowledge and they have no expertise in that area. But how do, you, how do you start your journey? What do you start with? If you want to become a data analyst, for example, what's that critical step? What's the first foundation, the first block you put down in building that foundation? It's important because if you don't know, you'd make a very, you'd take a wrong turn and then you'd find yourself struggling, getting into a career path, which should not be so difficult, or you made it difficult by not putting the right blocks in place. All right, and I'm going to walk you through that as well. Then I'll introduce you to our upcoming program. We've helped two, over 2,000 people across different regions, from the UK to the US to Canada, across Europe, Africa, and so on and so forth. All right, how have we done it? And how can you also benefit from that? So if you are looking to transition and you are here, you want to know how you can also make that transition. Okay, how can I move from being a care worker, being in the health um, sector, working as a customer service professional? How do I move from those career paths into a more progressive career path where you have flexible work, um, you know, systems, you don't have to go to the office every day and so on and so forth. And what makes you stand out in a competitive job market like the UK, Canada and also in the US. And finally, I have a fantastic offer for everybody on the call today. And I'm gonna share that towards the end of our session. Like I said, keep the questions coming in and ensure that you ask as many questions as possible. Again, my colleague Ubong would share the, the, the attendance form so that you can get the recording from today's session. You get the slides, you get all the materials and resources I'll share with you, okay? So check out for that in the chat from time to time. Now, one of the major experiences I've had, the very first time I, I worked with a company in the US, I was still back in Nigeria, I worked remotely. While I was being introduced to the head of department, to my team members, there was no African on the team. I was the only African. The same experience in the UK. When I moved to the UK as well, I also got to see the same thing. You find very, the number of Africans you'd find on the team, especially the technology team, the IT team, the numbers are always very abysmal. And I asked myself the question, why are Africans not transitioning? Now you find a lot of Africans in other type of roles, for example, in the healthcare, and they're making strides, which is great, fantastic. But unfortunately, you see that a lot of the Africans, a lot of people, I had friends who came from Nigeria, doing their masters, worked as bankers, 
in Nigeria for over the last you know, 10 years, but they moved to the UK and became care workers. Not because they wanted to do care work, but because that was the only opportunity they felt that they had at that point in time, all right? But there are other, so many other areas. There are other areas you can tap into, get a skilled worker visa, because these are the career paths that are in demand. And these are the type of job codes that you can also get an offer and get an organization to sponsor you. You get your COS, you apply for a skilled worker visa, and you can stay back in the UK. But a lot of people don't know this. So we don't have enough Africans and people of the Black community in tech. And majority, part of the reasons, apart from the fact that, okay, health and care, people can easily get the care jobs, they can easily get the health and care visa, and they can stay back, all right? Apart from that, people don't get close to tech because of the wrong assumption that you must know mathematics and you must also know how to code. I never had to write a single line of code when I started my career for at least four to five years. I think about four years. I never wrote a single line of code. And the only time I started coding was because I decided that I want to move into data science. I want to build machine learning models and so on and so forth. All right. And it's a bit, you know, strange. When I say this, it sounds strange to some people that how do you how do you become a data analyst and you don't have to write codes, you don't have to know mathematics, algebra, um, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to walk you through all the things you need to do. Okay. So we don't have enough people because of the fear of math and the fear of coding. However, the tech ecosystem has a massive demand massive demand and people don't know where the opportunities are. So you're a very close circle of people. When I moved to the UK as well, and I interacted with the black community, I always want to be around people like that to get to hear and get a feel of how the thing, the areas where you know people easily get into. And every everybody talked about getting the care job, getting the care job, getting the care job, that was all. But there is a massive demand, massive opportunities in the tech ecosystem. And a lot of people don't know how to take advantage of these opportunities. And we've done this in the UK extensively, helped too many people across the UK get visa sponsored jobs, get jobs in different areas and so on. And we moved to Canada, like I mentioned earlier, to do the same. So what we've replicated and we've been successful in doing over the last three years, in the UK. Let's come to Canada and let's do the same. So myself and my co-founder, Efemena, we moved to Canada. Efemena came in in December, I came in in January, and the target was very simple. How do we get more Africans, people of the Black community, currently in Canada, into the tech ecosystem? And in helping us further this mission, we joined, we were accepted into the Alberta Catalyzer Velocity Program. It's a very difficult program to get into. And this program helps businesses, startups, innovative companies to thrive, grow, and penetrate the new markets they're trying to get into. So that's myself right there. And that's Efemena. And that's the both of us. We got into the program this month in October, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. We've just been about three weeks into the program, and we've connected with so many organizations, talking in partnerships with companies, like CIBC and the rest, on how they can tap into the talent pool of the talents that we have at Analytics and hire them to get into the organizations. I made a post about this on LinkedIn. You can you know, have a read, go through it. And we also there was also a post about this, an article on Tech Cabal. I've also kept the link for you. So you can go there, read about it, and see the amazing work we've been doing over the years. Now, going back to the demand within the ecosystem, in the UK, for example, according to the UK government Department of Science and Innovation, the demand for data skills is, has been unprecedented over the last few years. Organizations are looking to hire. Almost 50% of companies are looking to recruit for roles that require data skills. 
And year on year in the UK, you have over 878 to 234,000 data related roles that are left unfilled. And the reason why these roles are left on fields is very simple. Number one, people are not applying. People don't apply. And of course, if you don't have the skills, you can't apply to those jobs. Number two, people don't have the right skills. For those who apply, they don't have the right skills to compete for that job. So these are the two major reasons why these roles are left on field. Imagine you have between 178,000 roles to 234,000 every year that are left on field. They are looking for people, but they can't find them. And people go on YouTube, they try to learn on YouTube, they try to learn using a self-paced environment. And that's one of the worst places, one of the worst places you can learn. How many of us um, have registered for a Udemy course and we never go back to finish? I have like a million. <laughs> and I'm sure if you ask yourself, you'd realize that you fall into that category. You registered for a course here, you've started you know, learning something on YouTube, but you never complete it because it is not you don't have it is not structured for you to start from point A and end at point end at point B, and you have no accountability for completing that program. So it's a whole lot difficult for you to do that. And even more importantly, it's the worst place for you to start. I can use I can search things on YouTube, and I know exactly what I'm doing today because I have the experience, I have the foundation. But starting from there is one of the most difficult times you'd have. If you don't have a structured learning approach, you don't have somebody, you can ask questions, you can call, you can stop and say, hey, you just typed this, you just clicked on this, I clicked on it, but I'm not getting the same thing. You need that instructor-led approach, very important. So these roles are there and people can't get them. Well, analytics participants have been getting these jobs, but how can we get more people to get the skills to apply to these same jobs? And if you look at the roles that are, you know, the most common roles, the top 10 roles organizations are hiring for in the UK that are data related, you'd see the data analyst as number one. You'd see the data scientist, you'd see the data engineer. And if you go down, this is just the top 10, you'd see more roles related to the data ecosystem. And the question is, why are organizations hiring for these roles? It's very simple. Over the last 90% of the data we have today, 90% of the data that exists today was generated in the last five years. The world has been in existence for over 300,000 years. Okay, 90% of the data we have today was generated in the last five years. So organizations are looking for professionals who can manage that data, store that data, analyze the data, extract insights from the data to help them take decisions. And that's why you'd see data roles at a massive increase in terms of the number of jobs available. All right, so this is just one, and I'm just going to walk through this very quickly so we get into the main meat. Of course, you also have in the US that the massive um, demand for the agile project manager, okay? So you'd see organizations saying that 71% of US companies use the agile project management methodology. And a lot of people don't even know what agile project management is. We know project management, okay, conventional, generic, but why do we have to focus on agile? Apart from the fact that there is a massive demand, what is in there? Why is it important? And that's because agile is tailored towards the tech ecosystem. I'm going to break this down as we move into the program itself, okay? But when you're working on projects within the tech ecosystem, the best methodology for doing that is the Agile methodology. And I'll speak about that as we move. In Canada, you have hundreds of thousands of cybersecurity roles needed in Canada. We have participants who got jobs from Nigeria, they moved to Canada, 
to, you know, as permanent residents to continue those jobs. We have people who came into Canada the very first month they came into Canada, they got their jobs. We have somebody who started our program in March, uh, Busola. I'm going to share her story with you. Busola came in, she joined us in March this year, completed our program sometime in June, and she landed a job that same month with Desjardins Insurance here in Canada as a performance analyst. So how do you get tapped into the job market? The job market in Canada is very competitive, okay? But how do you stand out? That becomes the question you want to ask. And those are the things I'll show you how, what to do, how to stand out, and how Tenalytics ensures that you stand out in the job market and get the best jobs available, okay? Uh, what if the best option based no resources? Uh, okay, I'm not sure I understand your question on large day. Okay, what if that is the best option based on no resource? Maybe you want to type that. I'm not sure I understand your question. All right, send it again, rephrase it, and I'll take the question as we move on. So organizations are hiring for cybersecurity professionals. Over 157,000 cybersecurity professionals are needed to cover the skill gap. And I can go on and on, on and on and on. According to the American Professional Guide, you have the cybersecurity role expected to increase in demand by over 30%. According to Constellation Research, you'd see that the data scientists, the data analysts, cybersecurity analysts, software developers in the US are in demand. And for the next decade, I expected to grow exponentially. And of course, for those in the UK as well, one of the things we always tell people is don't look for all the jobs. Look for the jobs that are in demand. Look for the jobs you can use to apply for a skilled worker visa if you get um, an offer. And find a company that can also give you that COS, which are part of the things we show you how to do. So you see the code. This is the job code and the career path that would enable you to apply for a skilled worker visa if you get an offer from a UK company that has the license to sponsor you. So this is from the UK Gov, the gov.uk website, okay? Code 2131 are for your IT project managers. Whenever you hear IT project manager, what they're telling you is what? The Agile project manager. Remember, what did I say about Agile? These are the current, these are the project managers in the tech ecosystem, okay? So Agile is where you get these opportunities. The IT managers, you have your data center managers, data visualization. When you see data visualization, what comes to mind? The data analyst, the BI analyst, and so on and so forth, the business intelligence analyst. All right, you'd see the code 2133. These are your business analysts, the IT business analysts, and so on and so forth. Data communications analysts, change analysts. And then you'd see the 2134. You'd see the programmers, the software development professionals, the database. When you see database developers, what comes to mind? You have your data analyst as well. And you also have your data engineers. Okay, so you want to look for this career path where if you get, you target the company that has the license to sponsor, you can get a COS, you can apply and get a skilled worker visa. Now, we didn't stop there. What we do every year, which we started doing for the year 2024, we collate data from the major job boards, from LinkedIn, Glassdoor, CV Library, ZipRecruiter, from the major economies, the UK, US, and Canada. What do we do with this data? We analyze the data to find the jobs that are highest in demand. So over the last one year in 2024, which career path have recruiters hired for the most, okay? But we don't just stop there. What we also do is we take three criteria and juxtapose this against those criteria, those job roles. All right, for example, ease of learning. So let's take uh, robotics. Robotics is in high demand. Robotics is a fantastic career path. 
but is it easy to learn? Can I learn this in the space of three to five months? The answer is no. If I want to do robotics, I'd likely go back to the university. If I don't need to do an undergraduate, I'd have to do a master's program and so on to get into robotics. So ease of learning is very important. Which skills, which career path has the skills that I can learn within the space of three to five months and I can start to apply to jobs? We looked at the ease of transitioning. So which career path can I learn the skills even though I have done customer service in the last five years or I've worked as a care worker in the last three years or I'm currently a pharmacist or I'm currently a supply chain manager? How easy would it be for me to transition from my past career path into a co the current career path? So we looked at ease of learning and also high and rewarding salary. That the salary is also fantastic. And we came up with eight career paths. That if you focus on this career path, you would get a job very, very fast. Number one is the business analyst, the agile project manager, I talked about that slash Scrum Master, the data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, cybersecurity analyst, the financial analyst, and the HR analyst. Eight career paths that if you get into, you'd get a job very fast because of the demand and so on and so forth. Okay. Now we didn't stop here. We've been doing this analysis since 2021. We did it in 2021, 2022, last year and we've started working on the one for this year. But we don't do it in isolation. So yes, it's fine and good. We've seen the career path that are in demand. However, let's look at external bodies that are also publishing something like this and validate the type of results we get. So we, we decided to seek for external validation, right? And we used the World Economic Forum Future of Jobs reports. It's accessible to everybody. And I would implore everybody here on the call today, at the end of the session, take out time and read this report. Just go on Google and type WEF, Future of Jobs Reports, okay? And this would come out, the World Economic Forum Future of Jobs Report. All right, very, very important. I've kept the link for you here as well. So you can just, once you get my slides, Click on the link, you have access. So what you want to do is fill the attendance form, ensure that you fill the form so that you receive all the materials at the end of the session today. Now, this report is important for anybody who is considering transitioning. So you are currently a banker, you're planning to move to Canada, you're planning to go to the UK for your master's, or you're already in the UK doing your master's and you realize that the skills I'm getting from my master's program would not get me the job I need at the end of my master's. You want to transition, learn skills that are in demand in your current um, region and get a job, okay? Now, you don't want to do this blindly. And the reason is you want to get into a career path that has relevance in the next five to 10 years. You don't want to transition only to find out that, oh, in 2025, I have to pivot to a new career path because my career, the current career path I'm in is being phased out. So this shows you the jobs that will grow in demand and the jobs that will decline in demand. So at the left-hand side, you have the jobs that will grow in the next five to 10 years, the career path that will keep on growing. And at the right-hand side, you have the career path that will keep on declining. So imagine you have access to this. You can't make a mistake transitioning okay so which career path would grow in demand that's my focus so i can pick one get into it learn the skills hone my skills get experience and then i'm able to get a job and i'll show you how to do all of this okay number one you'd see the ai machine learning specialist the business intelligence analyst the data analyst and the data scientist it's a no-brainer these are where the opportunities are today and in the next five to 10 years. If you want to stay relevant, you want to be in a career path that involves data. It's either you're analyzing the data, you're protecting the data like a cybersecurity professional, 
or you are structuring the data, creating the infrastructure for the data like the data engineers and so on. So when you see all the advancements in AI, large language models, your chat GPT, your Gemini, your meta AI, and so on and so forth. This is the reason why you see that trend. The World Economic Forum has projected that these are where the opportunities would be. And that's why you see all these things happening. And we are generating data at an unprecedented rate. Organizations need you, they need professionals that can handle that data and work with the data. So that's why you see all these areas from AI machine learning to business intelligence analysts to data analysts, data scientists, they cut across this ecosystem, the data analysts and the data scientists. Then you have the information security analysts who are your cybersecurity professionals. So as a cybersecurity professional, you protect data. You ensure that you protect it from internal and external threats, okay? You have the big data specialists, you have the data engineers, and then you have the database architects. These are the professionals that builds the infrastructure for how the data would flow across the organization, how the data is stored and managed for easy access. So if I need data and I work for Scotia Bank or I work for Lloyds Bank, it's, I need to be able to access that data easily. Who makes it easy for me to access? The data engineers. So they have different job titles. You see the big data specialists, the data engineers, the database architects, and so on. Then you have the process automation specialists. These are your business analysts. The business analysts are the professionals that the process analysts, they ensure that processes are efficient. Processes within organizations flow easily. Something that takes five days, we are able to reduce it to just five minutes through automation so that the company is more efficient to make more revenue and reduce its losses. And of course, you want to know other career paths that will grow. You also have the project managers, okay? And these are your agile, project managers. You have the database and network professionals. So these are your data engineers, your cybersecurity professionals. You have the financial analysts, okay? You also have the financial analysts. Now, why is it important for us to know this? It means that I'm not going to make a mistake if I'm transitioning today, because I know the career path that would grow, and I know the career path that would remain, that would become redundant in the future. For example, the accountants and the auditors, these are roles that would, you know, consistently decline in demand over the next five to 10 years. So if I'm, if I'm an accountant today, or I'm an auditor today, or I'm a telemarketer today, or I'm a software tester today, I need to upskill. I need to prepare to ensure I stay relevant. As an accountant or auditor, you add any data analytics skills to your accounting and auditing skills, you become what? A financial analyst who can use data to analyze financial records. So you take your, your knowledge, your experience as an accountant, you add data analytics to it. The fusion of that two gives you the financial analyst role. And that's why you see that those are the people that would stay relevant, get the new jobs available in the job market, all right? So we have eight career paths, eight different career paths based on a, an educated research that we do every single year. And also based on the World Economic Forum, future of jobs reports of where the work, world of work would be in the next five to 10 years. So I want to ask before we move on, okay, which of these career path are you interested in? Which of this career path are you interested in? Just type into the chat, data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, business analyst, even though we're not going to talk about everything today. Okay, we'll talk about the ones that involve no coding, no math. All right. So cybersecurity. A lot of people are typing cybersecurity, cybersecurity. Mudupe says business analyst and logo, 
data analyst, Avi says financial analytics, absolutely phenomenal. Okay, career path with less programming. Okay, Olajide says for now, business analysis, brilliant. Okay, so now let's segment this. Let's separate them into no coding, no math. Okay, no coding, no math. What this, what this means is I don't need to learn mathematics extensively. I don't need to go learn statistics. I don't need to go learn linear algebra. I don't need to go learn numerical methods, probability, because I want to get a new job. Now, this involves you learning mathematics and all those areas, or you'd have to code extensively as part of your daily activities or daily job function when you get a job in this area. So I'm going to break them down into two. The eight areas, we're going to break them down into two. I would start with the no coding, no math, and then we move into coding and math. So the data analytics, the data analysts, you don't need to learn mathematics. You don't need to learn coding, okay? Then you have the business analysts. I saw that quite a number of you chose business analysis. Business analysis also has a component of data analytics embedded. But you don't also need to learn how to code. You don't need to learn mathematics. And I'm going to walk you through this practically, OK? Financial analytics, the same. Cybersecurity, HR analytics, and finally, the agile project management. Now, as a financial analyst, you will learn accounting, OK? So you're going to do calculations. You're going to do ratios. We are going to model financial statements. We are going to um, do valuation and scenario analysis. But all of these things don't need you to go back to school, go back to class to learn mathematics extensively. All those things you need to calculate can be done for you on Excel. Power BI will do the calculations for you. Okay, You don't need to memorize those calculations. You don't need to know how to write all the functions all the formulas. And that's the, that's the misconception people have. As a data analyst, I'm going to analyze data. I'm going to do some calculations and all of that. Yes, you would. But these are calculations that Excel will do for you. I want to count. I want to average. I want to um, calculate the mean. I want to do this. I want to do that. Excel will do the job for you. You don't need to go back to learn mathematics. And when you look at the coding, the career path that requires extensive coding, extensive mathematics, data science requires both. You'd have to learn how to code using Python, and you'd also learn statistics probability as part of the skills you need to become a data scientist. And then as a data engineer, you don't need mathematics. However, you're going to code extensively using Python, all right? So we've separated the two. Six fall under one category of no coding, no math. The other falls under the category of coding and mathematics. So it's easy for you to decide. I can't become a data engineer and I'm scared of learning Python. I can't become a data scientist and I'm scared of statistics. And like I told you at the beginning, the first four years of my career, I worked as a data analyst. I never had to code. Okay. I only started to code when I wanted to become a data scientist. So I was moving from being a data analyst into data science. And it comes with what? Statistics. It comes with machine learning, which involves the use of what? Python. So you're going to code, you're going to learn statistics if you want to become a data scientist. But on the other hand, as a data analyst, your basic math, fundamental mathematics that you've learned in high school, you've learned in university, you know how to do business math, that's all you need. And I'm going to show you practically how that implies, okay, or how that applies, rather. Now, one other thing I want you to know is... Um, so one other thing I want you to know is that because I've completed a data analytics program or a business analysis program does not mean 
that the only type of job I can apply to is as a business analyst because people make this mistake. Oh, business analyst is the only job I can do. Lois, which I'll share Lois's story with you. Lois completed our business analysis program and she got a job as a project manager. Now, how did this happen? Or how is this even remotely possible? And that's simply because business analysis comprises of three major areas. Business analysis has data analytics. You're going to learn Excel, you'll learn Power BI, you'll learn SQL. Then you'd also get to learn project management. You'd learn Agile, you'd learn Scrum, you'd learn how to use tools like Jira to track project deliverables, Trello for your teams, managing your teams on projects, and Confluence for collaborating on projects. Then you learn your core business analysis you know, um, areas. So these are the three areas. And what did Lois do? She doubled down on project management, our facilitator in-house, our agile project management facilitator worked with Lois, prepared her for her interview, and she landed this job as a project manager. So, and this is what we encourage and show our participants how to do, okay? So yeah, if you've gone through the data analytics career path, for example, you can apply to jobs as a data analyst, business intelligence analyst, sales analyst, database analyst, database administrator, operations analyst, and so on and so forth. As a business analyst, you can apply to jobs as a change management analyst, as a business systems analyst, and so on, as a business data analyst. That's a business analyst with a flavor of data analytics. As a cybersecurity analyst, as a SOC analyst, security operations center, as a penetration tester, as a vulnerability analyst, and so on and so forth. Financial analyst, you can apply to jobs as a financial planning and analysis professional. You can apply to jobs as a commercial analyst. You can even apply to jobs as a financial data analyst. Because as a financial analyst or a data analyst that focuses on financial records. And this cuts across as an agile project manager, you can apply to jobs as a scrum master. Because agile cuts into three major frameworks the Scrum framework, the Lean framework, and the Kanban framework. So I'm gonna learn how to use Scrum and you can apply to jobs as a Scrum master, as an Agile project manager, as an Agile coach, and so on and so forth. Same with HR analysts, all right? So this is very important in your job search. We've had participants get jobs as, um, what's the name now? I keep on forgetting. In the health sector, one of our participants got a job with the NHS as a pathology data analyst. That was his job role. We had never seen it before. Pathology data analyst. Okay, you'd see so many job roles depending on what the organization wants at that point in time. So we teach you and we show you how to apply with a broader scope and don't ignore job roles especially after you haven't gone through the job requirement. Look at the job requirement. Do they meet the skills I have at the moment, even though the job title does not say data analyst, all right? I, for one, I worked as an MIS analyst, okay? And people would wonder, what does MIS mean? Is this a data analyst role? Is it a business analyst role? But this is a data analyst role. MIS simply means Management Information Systems Analyst. And what did I do on that role? I worked with the owners of the company, the directors of the company, analyzing the data of all the companies within the group and reporting directly to the owners. So I was the eyes of the owners in the business. So they knew exactly what was happening at every point in time. I had Power BI reports that were automated, that goes to them every single week. Every quarter, we have something we call MIS. MIS is our management information systems reporting, where we report on all the companies, what happened, what we need to do, recommendations, and so on. So you must look at the job requirements, and this helps you, you know, understand if you can apply to this job or not. Now, most people are usually on this point. I call it the inflection point. The inflection point is where you need to make a decision of what to do. Do I take this step 
or do I take that step? So most people are here. They don't know what to do, where to go. And it's very easy to take the wrong turn. And if you take the wrong turn, you get into the wrong horse and then your career transitioning will take a nosedive. Making the right decision takes you up this point to where you get into the ecosystem before it is too late, all right? So most people are here and they don't know what to do. Which career path should I move into? What is relevant to me? Now, people that are going to the wrong course, this is what they do, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what they do, but I'll quickly check in the charts to see if I have any questions before I continue. Ah, Dominic got it here. Dominic, you're right. Management Information Systems Analyst, absolutely. Um, let me see if we have more questions. I'm not sure. Why do we need SSQL? Okay. <laughs> but data analysis is actually SQL, SQL. Okay. So Microsoft has SSMS, SSRS, SS, and so on. Okay. Uh, but SQL is for accessing databases because that's where data will be stored. I'll talk about that as we move on. Okay. Just make a note of that on RGD and we'll talk about it. All right, I'm not sure we really have questions in the chat. Let's go into the rest of the session. So make sure you fill the attendance form, like I said, so you don't miss out on all my slides and all the information I have here. Why do people get into the wrong course? What do they do wrongly? Number one is they always chase after certifications rather than skills and experience. So remember this and write it down if you have a note and your pen. Competent, your watchword this year going into, you know, subsequent years is what? Competence over credentials. Competence over credentials. Your competence is what gets you the job. But everybody wants to get certificates. So oh, I need a certification. I need this. I need that. But guess what? A whole lot, a large chunk of the people that join us at Analytics have certificates. They've done a business analysis certificate somewhere. They've done a project management certificate. But they still don't know how to do the job. They don't know what the project manager does practically. They don't know what the business analysts will do or how they perform their duties and activities within the real world. And this is where they get it wrong. Employers don't care about a paper qualification. What they care about is your competence. And this comprises of two things, your skills and your experience. So the big question, how do you get the skills? We don't analytics, we train you. How do you get experience? Most people don't know how. And you get experience by getting trained in a project-based environment. And I'm going to show you what this is practically, okay? So we are, we are unpacking the session step by step, all right? But take this thing, take this down. Competence over credentials and your competence includes your skills and your experience. That's what gets you the job. Employers really don't care about where you went to school. Did you school in the US? Did you school in Canada? Did you school in Nigeria? I schooled in Nigeria. I've worked with some of the biggest and the best organizations across the globe. I only did my master's about two years ago when I moved to the UK. So when you ask yourself the question, what actually got me the job? Was it my certificates? Was it my educational background? The answer is a big no. Lois who got a job as a project manager who completed our business analysis program has zero certificates. And up till today, I have zero certifications. And I've worked with some of the biggest and the best organizations across the globe. How can you also do the same? Focus on your competence, not certificates. They don't take you anywhere, all right? The second thing people do and chase, which gets them into the wrong turn, the wrong course is they join training that are not project-based and don't have internships. If this is what you do, you learn on YouTube, you learn on Coursera, you do this and you do that, you don't get the experience that you need to get that job. So even if you get the job, you're not going to last on that job because 
you don't know what to do. All right, so the worst place you can start is self-paced. I did it myself, and it was the worst time of my of my transition. Myself and Femena, a simple SQL query. We make a mistake. We we run the we run the query. We don't get the results we we want, and we don't know what to do. And there was nobody to ask. So we're figuring things out ourselves, and we wasted precious time. So you want to join a project based a structured learning approach where you work on projects, work on case studies, all right? You'd find people who also, they start with you too. They do Coursera as a beginner. It's the worst, like I said. You don't want to be there. And finally, you don't have employability skills. And I dare say this is even one of the most important. You don't have the right CV. I've seen CVs and I've seen CVs, okay? You can see this, you, no matter how much you apply, even if the minimum requirement is high school, you still would not get that job, all right? You need to know how to tailor your CV to jobs. You need to know how to answer questions during interviews. If you're asked a question like, tell me about yourself, can I get to meet you? Dominic, let's get to meet you. That's simply saying, tell me about yourself. How do you answer that question? You must know the right framework to use called the SEAT approach. What does SEAT mean? S for skills, you talk about your skills. My name is Dominic, um, I'm a skilled data analyst with extensive use of Excel, Power BI, SQL, and Tableau. You talk about your experience. I have five years experience working across the energy sector and also financial services. Over the last five years, my major work, my major achievement was when I worked in the energy sector. You talk about your achievements. When I worked in the energy sector, my department had no database where they had a central single source of truth for their data reporting. I used my SQL skills to build a database within the first one week of joining that company. And we, we were able to reduce our reporting time from two days to only one hour, saving us over 80% of the time it would have taken for us to complete our reports. That's an achievement. Talk about your achievements. At least two. And then talk about your type of person. Type of person, which you can also, you can also call these traits. I'm a team worker, I'm a problem solver, and my core principle revolves around punctuality because I believe if you're punctual and if you're punctual, you can achieve anything you want to achieve. So you talk about punctuality in, light, in, in line with the core values of the company. So if the core value of the company is punctuality, say you're punctual, if the core value is professionalism, talk about how professional you are. If the core value is team-oriented, a team-oriented professional. Talk about the way you work across cross-functional teams, including the data scientists, the project managers, the UI UX designers while delivering projects. Talk about that. But you must know how to introduce yourself. If you don't, and this is how you set the tone for the rest of the interview. So if you talk about achievements that are compelling, they would ask you questions. Oh, tell me about the database you said you built. They ask questions, and because you have decided to do what? Control the narrative. You would have prepared for the type of questions that are likely going to come up and the answers. So things as simple as this makes a whole lot of difference. And that's why your employability skills, employability stops too many people from getting the job. So you don't need only technical, which is what most people do when they go here and they go here. They learn only the technical. They are the best in the use of Excel. If you wake them from sleep and say, oh, write a VLOOKUP, an XLOOKUP, or an index match um, formula, they would write it in their sleep. But ask them to tell me about a time you used Excel to solve a data-related problem and what was the impact on the company they struggle to constructively answer using techniques like the STAR technique. When you talk about your situation, you talk about the task, you talk about 
the action you took or the actions you took, not as a team, but you as an individual, and then the results. You exaggerate your results and your achievements every single time. So how do you use these frameworks? And that's why interview becomes very important. And we prepare you for what? Your interviews. So these are the things that ensure you don't get into the wrong house. But this is what people do. Okay, and of course, you don't know where to apply and how to apply. Applying to jobs itself is a job on its own. Okay, knowing where to apply and how to apply is even more important than just the application. Because if you apply to the conventional platforms that everybody knows about, you are competing with everybody to get those jobs. Your LinkedIn, your ZipRecruiter, your job bank, .gc.ca, if you're in Canada, if you're in the UK, you're applying to CD Library, you're applying to read.co.uk, if you're in the US, you're applying to ZipRecruiter, Total Jobs, Indeed. You're going to compete with every other person. How do you tap into the hidden job market? How do you tap into platforms where you have jobs curated for specific categories? Those visa-sponsored jobs, the UK visa jobs where you get visa-sponsored jobs, uh, visa jobs HQ, uh, job rights, and so many of them. Okay, and these are the places where you get opportunities that are not available to everybody. Now, why are they not available to everybody? Because they are not free. They are what paid, and few people would pay to multiple platforms where they get jobs constantly and apply to those jobs. And that's where Tenalytics steps in again. So we apply to these job sites, to these job boards, and we provide you with those jobs. So you don't have to go back yourself to apply or pay for those websites, pay for those job boards. We pay for the job board, consistently subscribe, and then we get the jobs, we scrape the jobs on the website, and we send them to you for you to apply. So you have access to where to apply to these jobs. And something as simple as knowing that to get a job offer, you need to apply to at least 249 jobs properly. So not applying with one CV and you toss that CV, you go to LinkedIn, easy apply, easy apply, easy apply. If you've been doing that, stop it. You are wasting your time. You are never going to get that interview. Easy apply does not work. You must always tailor your application, tailor your CV to the jobs you're applying to. And the number you are looking at is what? 249 on the average. It could be lesser, it could be more. So when you know this, you can then break it down. How many jobs do I apply to per day? How many must I apply to per week if I'm serious on getting this job? Okay, so these are the reasons why people fall into the wrong course and they never move away from this point and go up the ladder. Okay, now how does analytics ensure that you don't fall into those steps? And I've talked about them as I was explaining, but I'll just quickly walk through that very quickly. And then we see some success stories as well. So how does analytics help you transition? How does analytics help you stand out and succeed no matter where you are across the globe? It's a six step approach. It's practical steps. And I'm going to walk you through one after the other. I'll move a little bit fast because of time, but then I'll walk you through so you see clearly how to start. Number one is you need to select your, your desired career path. So most of you, when I ask the question, oh, what career path are you interested in? You chose business analysis. <laughs> okay, I'll just look at the charts. Peggy says 249, yes. Sometimes it could be more, you have to apply to more, but that's the average number of jobs you need to apply to. So once you know this, you won't be surprised if, oh, I did, you, you might be happy. I've seen somebody, he came on a call, a one-on-one -on -one call with me, a quick story. And he said, I'm, I'm frustrated, I'm tired. I saw your masterclass, I'm interested in joining Tenalytics, but I have some skills and I've been applying and applying and applying to jobs. And I've been getting rejections. Or I've not been getting anything. And I was asking, I said, okay, uh, after so much conversations, I said, okay, how many jobs do you apply to per day? He said, sometimes I apply to as many as three, as many as five every single day. 
and I just laughed and I knew the reason why he wasn't getting results. Okay, so you need to know how many jobs do I need to look at? How do I structure and plan my schedule in a way that if I'm not doing all these jobs daily, daily is what I, what I recommend. So you come back from work, you get some sleep, wake up late in the night, 12, 12 midnight, 1 a.m., depending on your time zone. You do job application for the next two hours. You might want to go back to sleep. It's up to you to decide. If it's weekends that will work for you, you take out the weekend, Saturdays, Sundays, um, Mondays, if you want, you take out time to apply to as many jobs as possible. But you know the figure in mind, 249. And not just 249, throw in your CV and hope that one of them will stick, but you are properly tailoring that CV to the jobs you're applying to. Very, very important. Very, very important. Okay, so... Um, your banner says BP amplified. <laughs> you don't worry, your banner. There's nothing about BP. You don't need to worry about that because as long as you know what to do, then it's easier for you to structure your plans along those lines. Okay. And Barachel is saying, no wonder my five applications did not yield any results. Absolutely. Five is like, you know, um, it's, it's like a drop in the ocean when it comes to the grand scheme of things on what you need to actually get that job. All right. So don't forget, make sure you fill the attendance form and show that you get my materials at the end of the session. So you want to select the career path you're interested in. That's number one. Once you've done that, the next step is you start learning the skill. So it's not enough for you to say, oh, I want to do become a business analyst, a data analyst, and you go to sleep. You start building the skills. You join a learning partner, a partner that offers something that would hold your hands through the journey. You want it to be different from you learning on YouTube or you learning on Coursera. You do that after you've gained the foundation. You have a solid foundation. You have the skills. You know what you're doing. You can then add bits and pieces on platforms. I, I go to YouTube every day. I'm building a dashboard. I want to do something on Power BI. How do you um, convert this particular slicer into you check those things you see some videos and you apply that but learning from scratch and doing that it's is the worst because you spend all your time trying to figure things out that you don't know okay so learn the skill get a learning partner okay that will work with you on this and that's where analytics comes in we hold your hands you have your mentorship sessions every wednesdays every thursdays Every Thursday, you see me, you see the co-founder of Analytics at Femena. We bring in other industry professionals, and the focus is to solve all the problems you have, the challenges, and, and so on and so forth. Then you need to gain practical experience, project experience. Experience is not just gained by taking a backpack, going to the office, hopping into the train, going to the office. No, you gain experience by working on projects. So if you say you are a data analyst, anybody here that is a data analyst, you're a data scientist, you're a data engineer, you're a business analyst, you're a project manager, and you don't have a portfolio, you are equivalent to a carpenter who says he can build the most beautiful couch, but does not have a showroom. All they can show you is a CV or a certificate that says, the learned carpentry. For you to be attractive to employers, you must be a carpenter who can build a beautiful couch and has a showroom to show the couches that you've built so your customers can touch the couch, feel the couch, and see how good what you've built, the couches you've built look like so that they can decide on what to select. So that's what your project-based experience must look like. You must have a portfolio. You can't be a data analyst and not have a portfolio. You can't be a data engineer and not have a portfolio. You can't be a data scientist, a financial analyst, and not have a portfolio to show what you've done as evidence that you can do the job, all right? So you don't have experience in that career path is not a problem. Employers want to see that you've done it and see evidence that you've done it. And that's where your project-based experience comes in. So what we do at Analytics is you work on real-life case study projects. Case studies I've worked on before, 
as a data analyst. We change the name of the company, we change the data, modify the data due to data privacy, and you work on those same type of projects. And this cuts across all the programs. All right, so you would be gaining the same experience that I had when I, when I worked as a data analyst. And that's the way you have to do it. You must gain project-based experience and have a portfolio, which is your showroom of the things you've done. People can go into that showroom, they can go into your portfolio and see and interact with your project. I'll show you what the portfolio looks like. Then number four, you must gain employability skill. Don't be that person that goes into an interview and you are asked a question. Oh, tell me about yourself. And you ramble and ramble. You talk about how you are from Nigeria, how you come from Kogi State, how you are the first child of your family. You talk about irrelevances that the, the employer does not need to know. Okay? And then you don't get that job. And you come back and say, oh, I didn't get the job because I'm black. Or I didn't get the job because I don't have Canadian work experience. Okay? So don't be that person know how to answer questions constructively. There are frameworks to answer questions, all interview questions, and more importantly, the competency-based questions, questions that aim to ask what you've done before. They're called competency-based questions. They carry the highest mark, okay? So when you're asked questions, tell me about the time you have done this. Tell me about a time you have worked with a difficult stakeholder. Tell me about a time you built a machine learning model. Tell me, whenever you hear those type of questions, all right, those are competency-based questions and they carry the highest marks during interviews. I've been on so many interview panels and I'll tell you, if you can't constructively walk me through a minimum of three different projects, and I ask you questions on those projects and you answer convincingly, you can never get that job. Okay, so I've seen people who have worked on projects, but then you ask them, oh, you can use Tableau, Power BI. Okay, tell me how you connected your Power BI to a database and how were you able to get your data? What, what mode were you able to extract your data from the database into Power BI? Did you import your data directly? Did you use the direct query? And you tell me that, oh, when I worked in the bank, I worked on a project where the bank was doing a um, consolidation and I did this, I did that. Beautiful. Now I ask you another question entirely asking, oh, you can use Tableau. Tell me about the time you've used Tableau to do this or do that. And you talk about that same project in the bank when you were doing consolidation. Immediately, I know you don't have extensive experience, all right? So, and this is part of what we show you how to do. You don't repeat the same story. You don't repeat the same project multiple times. The vibe it gives to be panelist is this person is not experienced. So you want to construct five different solid stories going into any interviews. So when you're, when you're asked competency-based questions, you know exactly what to say. And that's why your interview prep with us is very, very important. Number five is networking, okay? 75%, some people will tell you even 85% of the jobs you are likely going to get would come through what? Networking, referral, okay? And these are some of the strategies we teach you at Analytics, how to get into, into people's DM on LinkedIn and not asking the wrong question, not saying, hey, can you mentor me? No. How do you ensure that you are able to reach out to um, the HR managers or even the hiring manager in any organization where you are applying to? You must know how to network. You must be part of a community like Tenalytics where when somebody in a particular organization gets a job and an opening is available in that same company, they post it in their classroom. Other people apply and they get that same job. Okay, so that's the power of being in a community. And that's what you also get with us. And finally, mentorship. Mentorship was something I didn't have early and I suffered for it. So my mentor was a Femena and I was a Femena's mentor. Myself and a Femena learned at almost the same time. 
So we made mistakes together, we learned together. So where I know something and he doesn't, I teach him. Where he knows something and I don't, he teaches me. So we suffered for that because you have scenarios where I don't know, he doesn't know, and there was nobody to ask. You want to have mentors who have gone ahead of you, mentors who have shown you what to do, who can show you what to do, mentors who have made the mistakes so you don't make this, those same mistakes again. And these are the six steps that if you put in place, let's say your target is to get a job early 2025 as a business analyst, and you start with step one to step six within the next three to four months you will get a job, all right? So breaking it down, I'm going to walk through this very quickly. This is uh, Victoria. Victoria is a customer service rep and she wants to get a job. So number one, she needs to learn the skill. Like we said, she selected a career path. She wants to be a data analyst or a business analyst. She needs to learn the skill, okay? Now, what we do at Analytics is called the blended learning approach to help you learn effectively. So you don't have to join live classes every single day, like you're doing your master's program, when at the end of the day, you finish your program and you really can't use that to get a job. So what's the best way to learn? You learn through a self-paced system on the Tenalytics LMS, the learning management system. And you also have your live instructor-led classes where you have a live trainer like myself, training you and walking you through working on projects together in a class. The live classes are every Saturdays. Every Saturday you have a live class and Sunday and all through the week, you can watch your videos at your convenience, all right? So I'm gonna show you what the platform looks like very quickly, okay? So if I go to the Tenalytics website, so for those who would register, for those who would be a part of the program, when you come in here, you'd see your dashboard, okay? If you click on the dashboard, it takes you into the LMS. So welcome back, Adesa. You'd see the program you've registered for, all right? If you have an interview, all you need to do is come in here. Like I said, your interview prep is what can make the difference for you. You come into the interview preparation section, you click on schedule appointment, okay? It takes you to, or oh, what program do you register for? The data science, the business analysis, agile project management, data analytics. Click on next, click on the link, and it takes you into a calendly where you are able to select time. There is a time slot, you know, for tomorrow, Friday, for example. So I want to pre get prepared for my interview. I click on that date, I select a time. Oh, I want it to be 12 noon or let's say 3.30. Click on next, it is my time zone. So your, the meeting gets scheduled based on your time zone. You enter your name, you enter your email, and you enter details of anything that would help us prepare you for that interview. Usually what happens is you have multiple interview sessions. So from the first session, you we rea you'd realize that there's so many things you need to prepare for. So we tell you what to do. We ask you questions. We see how you respond, and we tell you what to go prepare for. Then you come back, have another session until you are able to get into that interview and do the very best, okay? So let's say you registered for the business analysis, for example, you click on continue learning, you have access. So this is where you watch your videos, self-paced at your convenience at any point in time. And the beauty about doing this is, so let's say you are doing project initiation planning and stakeholder analysis. One of the things you do as a business analyst, while watching your videos, every single session has a case study. Like I said, project-based case study. So you work on this case study, click on play, you watch your videos, and you see that everything is built from scratch. So as a business analyst, you work with a lot of templates. But how do you build those templates? And that's how you learn how to do it. Okay, so you watch your videos, you practice, you get to do these things. And at the end of the day, you are able to build your stakeholder register and so on and so forth. And that goes for all the different areas that you're going to learn. Okay, you have where you have your class timetable. You can check what is upcoming. You can check your class recordings. 
you have access to your resources like your CV templates. You can download your CV templates after you've completed your CV review session and so on and so forth, okay? You can track the jobs you're applying to and there is also a job board for you to apply to jobs that, are, that we post for you from time to time, all right? So this is where you get to watch your videos at your convenience. This is the LMS, Structured Learning Approach. You have you want a reference letter, you, all you need to do is come in here, click, you've gotten a job, they need you to provide reference. Tenalytics is your number one reference. And that's why as a Tenalytics student, you are not a student, you are not a learner, but you are a consultant and a contractor with us. So when you get that job, we provide you with references. Then you have your live classes. So I'll go to one of the live classes, for example, let's go to the business analysis class that started this month on the 5th of October. So in your live class, this is where you have the opportunity to interact with your trainer. Okay, you have somebody like me, an expert working with you on projects. So you see this live class too. It's a practical case study class. For any reason, if you miss this class, you have access to the class recording. So you can come in here, click on the recording and see everything that happened in class on that day. What case study was treated? How was it solved? What questions were asked? You can watch this at your own convenience, practice along, so you don't miss anything at the end of the day. And when I say that, you learn and gain experience through a project-based method. This is simply what we mean. So if you go to the class materials for this particular class, which you would have, everybody has access to this. If you attend or you miss the class, you come in here, you click on the case study. So this case study is for a company called Protech Supplies. So you're gonna use Excel to help them solve a problem, okay? So you've been hired as a junior business analyst for Protech Supplies, a national retail company and so on. All right. Your first task is to analyze the company's data to provide actionable insights that would help inform strategic business decisions. Then you have the key, the key performance indicators, what you need to look out for, and also the business requirements and the problems that they face. And based on this, together with your trainer, you solve this problem. So this is part of what you'd add to your portfolio and part of what you would speak about on how you've used Excel, not just as a tool, but as a tool to solve problems, all right? So after your onboarding, you have your very first live class. Like I mentioned, the live classes are on Saturdays. So it's blended. You don't have to join live classes every day. You join your live classes on Saturdays and all through the week, you're on the LMS, watching, practicing at your own convenience, okay? So that's, the very important parts. Now, I talked about the project experience, gain project-based experience. So I'm just using business analysis. You'll receive my slides. So you can look at Victoria. Victoria is a data analyst. Onwa Chuku is a data engineer. Lemuel is a business analyst. So I'm going to click on Lemuel's profile, all right? Her portfolio. So you remember that carpenter and the showroom I talked about. Your portfolio is your showroom. So let's see Lemuel's showroom. So I'm going to click on this link and it takes us there. Everybody would build their own showroom. So this is Lemuel. Welcome to my business analyst portfolio. Now, one of the projects you're going to work on is the Unilever Canteen Ordering System. So Unilever, most of us know Unilever as a company. They have issues in the canteen. Too many staff go there at the same time. So you as the business, and, and it leads to delays in serving the food, delays in employees getting their orders and so on. So you would help them analyze the process, look for the gaps and inefficiencies, and help them build something that can improve that process. Okay, so I'm going to work on this project, but you need to enable people see what you've done. And that's the essence of your portfolio. Without this, I wouldn't hire any, I wouldn't hire you. If 
I had the opportunity to hire a business analyst and you can't show me what you've done in the past in a neat, organized, structured manner like this, you're not going to get that job. Okay, so let's, if I click on explore the Unilever project, I'll see exactly what Lemuel was able to do on this project. Okay, the background, what's the background of the, of the project of the company itself? What's the problem statement with the current state? And this is where the business analyst, you do a current state analysis. What is the current state of things at the moment? Without the current state, you can't know where the problems are. Limited food choices and waste, inefficient lunch breaks, canteen rush during lunch hours, and so on. All right. Now you talk about what you're trying to do and build, and you must have a business case for it. So you're not going to no organization would, because if you say we need a canteen ordering system, it's going to cost money and time for the business to implement that. You would be the business analyst managing the project. So you must make a case. So how do you make a proper business case? Okay, how do you analyze the stakeholders? Who's going to be involved on this project? How do you rank your stakeholders based on the interest and their power? Also using the race sign matrix as well. You do the SWOT analysis, you do your uh, requirements gathering, the front end features, the back end features, and do your as is process mapping. Map out the current process. How does it start and how does it end? If you know the current process, then you know what the to be should look like, the future states, okay? And this is where you start with your sprints. Sprints one, what are we going to do? Sprint two, what are we going to do? And so on. So looking at this, you would have no doubts in your mind that this business analyst knows exactly what she's doing. Okay? Same sunshine reports, sunshine results analysis for a high-end beachfront management, a high-end beachfront hotel management company. You do an analysis for British Airways using Excel and Power BI, and so on and so forth. Max Corporations, ABC Retail, all of these shows the depth of the skills that you have. So when I talk about project-based experience, remember you are the carpenter who does not tell everybody or show them a paper that they went to carpentry school, but they have a showroom where people can go in, feel, and touch the quality of the couch that the carpenter can build. So be the business analyst that has a showroom, be the data analyst that has a showroom. Then you must also learn your employability skills. So we help you with your CV review and revamp, your LinkedIn optimization, navigating the job market, interview prep, reference letters on the job support, and so on. Then you have your networking, your mentorship. If you go back to the LMS, you have your mentorship sessions and all of that. So the sessions that are held even before you joined, you have access to them. So if you go to your enrolled course, you would see where you have your mentorship program. So let's see the mentorship program for the data analyst. I click on view and it takes me to all the mentorship sessions that happened even before I joined, okay? And that's the beauty. So you have your interview prep sessions, LinkedIn optimization, Upwork optimization, CV optimization, employability sessions. So you, you have these sessions live as live sessions, okay? However, once the sessions are done, they are uploaded into your LMS. So you have access to them here. So if you look at this interview prep, for example, here I was talking about don't wait until you meet all the criteria before you apply to that job. So anybody can come in here and watch the video and see the strategies on how to ensure that. Most people, for me, for example, my very first job that gave me the break into the tech ecosystem, I met maybe just like 55 to 60% of the requirements. But ladies, most especially the female, would always want to, would always want to wait until they meet 100% of the requirements before they apply. Don't do that. So these are the strategies I gave during this session. Absolutely phenomenal session. So, and that's how you get to know what to do, okay? 
So listening to these sessions, participating, this was a live session where people had the opportunity to ask questions, okay? So you'd see where this gentleman, for example, was asking a question, his video was off, you know, and I was answering questions from different people across this system. This is Femi. Femi was also asking a question as well. So you have the opportunity to interact, engage, and ask questions around different areas. Same with the LinkedIn, Upwork, CV. I'll show you how to use ChatGPT to tailor your CV, all right? You'd also have sessions where FMNA would show you some tricks and some techniques that you can use to get the very best. And at the end of the day, you have the opportunity to get mentorship from both myself and other industry experts as well. And this is what gets you the job. All right. So I'll share some quick success stories with you because it always seems impossible until it is done. So when we see people that have done it, it becomes easier and exciting. Wow. Lois was able to do it. I talked about Lois. Lois was an accountant and a procurement professional. OK, Lois joined our business analysis program sometime, I think, in November. 2023. She completed her program this year, her, her internship, November, December, January, February. She completed her program around February or March this year. Okay. But she was still in school. She couldn't apply yet to get a full-time job. But when she started applying and she got opportunities, we prepared her for her interview. And we we're able to double down on her project management bits because that was what she wanted. And she got a job. But I want you to listen to Lois yourself. Hear what Lois has to say. And I'll probably play one more video for you, if time permits us, and you get to hear how she was able to make this transition. Lois is in the, is in the UK, by the way. So you know how she did it and how you can also do it as well. So sit back, relax, and listen to Lois. So I'm going to click on this link, and you hear what Lois has to say. Hi, guys. My name is Lois. I joined an analytic business analysis class in November 2023 with zero knowledge of BA, even though I was doing my master's at the time, which was focused on the management part of business analysis, not the techniques, tools, or even the requirements. I am so excited, as you can see, because guys, I just landed my first tech job as a project manager. Let me tell you a bit about my journey. So before I joined Analytics, I was an accountant and a procurement expert, so I didn't even know anything about tech. Analytics was my first exposure to core BA training and I learned so much. Things like SDLT, requirement elicitation, process mapping, project initiation and planning. And even apart from the BA training, they also helped me to develop myself through a lot of mentorship sessions that built me up in interview preparation, LinkedIn optimization, a day in the life as a BA, job search strategy, CV optimization, negotiation like a pro, career transitioning. Uh, uh, guys, it was a lot of value. I also ensured that I was actively involved in class. I mean, who didn't know Lois in the cohort? But after my training, I waited to complete my master's because I couldn't work full-time while studying. I then had my career plan mapped out and my first goal was to get a job in a student-focused role because of personal reasons and then transition to be a project manager. I mean, BA and PM are so relatable and there were more project management roles in my city. So, immediately I finished my studies, I leveraged on the CV skills, the interview skills that I had been taught to to land my first job in the university in a student focus too. And guess what? Six months later, exactly six months later, I landed the job I'm talking about now as a project manager, double the salary. So thank you, Tenalysis. I'm so happy to be in the tech space. And I encourage everyone that want to upskill, that want to have a refresher um, course to please do a joint Tenalysis and be like me because I mean, who doesn't want the money? Who doesn't want the skill? Who doesn't want to be in the tech space? So join Tenality. That's Lois. Lois can be very dramatic, and for but you can see her excitement. It was absolutely phenomenal. Lois did very well. Did BA, got a job as a project manager, and she's one of our superstars. We like to call. We had a we had an Instagram session I think about two weeks ago, where we brought her for people to ask questions and you know get to know a little bit more about Lois. You have Ungozi Adiremi, who is also in the UK. Ungozi got a job. She used to work as a customer service. She had done HR. She also did business analysis and she was able to get a job. 
you have Olola Day who joined our data analytics program. Olola Day also got her PR all the way from Nigeria. We wrote her references for her. We helped her with her application and she got a, she got her permanent residence. She's currently in Calgary, Alberta. Fantastic, fantastic lady. You have Bukola, Bukola Adenuga. Bukola, something interesting about Bukola's story. Bukola's boyfriend, who is in Poland, joined our program last year, right? He completed our data analytics program and he got a job as a business data analyst. And he told his girlfriend to join us as well. So Bukola joined us. She joined our data science program in September, completed our program in January this year. And Bukola also landed a job with QVC in Poland as a people data scientist. I've kept the links for you to watch and listen to these amazing professionals. So you also get to learn about their story and how they were able to transition. You have Joel. Joel joined our data engineering program, got a job, currently works remotely as a data engineer from Nigeria. You have Vivian, you have Ulu Adamilare, who is in the UK, got a job as a sustainability data analyst. He works in Leeds and he got this job in April this year. You have Ikmat. Ikmat got a full-time sponsorship with the NHS in the UK as a data analyst after completing our data analytics program and so many more. You have Abigail. Abigail is in Canada. Abigail used to work as a care worker, join our business analysis program and Abigail currently works with the government of Alberta as a business analyst. Tony used to be a pharmacist, currently works as a benefits analyst with the NHS. Her job also came with full visa sponsorship. Ramat works with the NHS as a business architect, after completing business analysis, her job also came with visa sponsorship after completing the business analysis program. You have Muidin, who works with a company in the UK as a business development manager, and also Abdul Rashid, who got a job working out of Abuja, Nigeria, working for a company in the US, working remotely, earning in dollars, and spending in pounds. And the list goes on and on and on. All right. So once you get the slide, you have the opportunity to listen, to watch, listen, read about these professionals who transitioned. Fola got into the program in February. She's in BC, Canada, got a job with the government of BC, British Columbia, here in Canada, after completing our business analysis program. Benem got a job in the US as a HR analyst. She joined us in January, completed our program in April and got this job in August this year. I've also kept links to sessions where we brought people who have gotten jobs, we brought them back so that people could ask questions. You have the opportunity to hear about their story and the immense opportunity and how you can also take advantage as well. Okay, so these are amazing, amazing professionals. All right, so I'm gonna run through the next, the last part of our session today. The last part will take us about 15 minutes, and I'm going to walk you through all the career path, okay? The no coding, the ones you're interested in, the no coding, the no mathematics, so you have an idea of what it takes for you to get into that career path, all right? So let's start. A lot of people think that, like I mentioned earlier, who oh, as a data analyst, I need to do a lot of calculations. I need to know mathematics. I need to know calculus, linear algebra, and so on. So let's do a very quick, you know, um, let's, let's play around a little bit. Now let's look at these data sets. And this is what would start, you start understanding the role of the data analysts or the role of anybody who has to work with data to analyze that data and extract insights from the data, okay? So if you look at what I have on my screen, it's a screenshot that shows time stamp, gender, destination, time of travel, type of activity, holiday with who, and transportation. I want somebody who is brave enough to tell me if I'm going to calculate how many people from this screenshot you can see on my screen which is, a, which is a data set gotten from a survey. You sent the survey to your customers to get 
with agenda, where they would like to travel to, when they would like to travel to that place, the type of activities they want, group or individual, who would they like to holiday with, with friends, with family, travel alone, and that transportation, would they prefer to have a car, hire a car, get into the bus, use the public train, and so on. So you got all these data back from them after they filled your survey. If I want to count how many people going to Berlin, what, how do I count? What do I need to do? Or if I want to know, rather, if I want to know how many people are male and how many people are female, I want to know how many are male, how many are female, what do I need to do? Okay, so I need somebody to just tell me, you're talking to a five-year-old, how would you tell the person, what do I need to do? All right? If you know you want to speak, we can type into the chat, but if you want to speak, just raise your hand. I would allow you to unmute yourself and we get to hear from you. Okay, I want to know how many male, I want to know how many male, how many female. How many male, how many female. Um, group by, a five-year-old does not understand what group by means, but the person typing group by. So you are talking to a five-year-old. So how would you tell the five-year-old? That's the question. Let's hear from Dominic. Dominic, I've asked you to unmute. So go ahead, let's hear from you. So thank you once again. Um, if I'm to explain this to a five-year-old child, I'll have mm -hmm. to um, categorize it into two since it's male and female. And I'm going to count how many are male in the data set and how many are female in the data set. And with, we, I will even work the five-year-old on a process and we're going to write, let's, let's say 80 are male and 20 are female. So with that, I can know how many male and female. That's to okay. explain to a five-year-old person. But if I'm to use a advanced project, I can actually use a count if and distinct if to get my male and female and count it. If I don't want to stress myself, I can actually use a pie chart in Power BI, which can even do it automatically for me. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks for that, Dominic. So it's as simple as counting. I want to know how many male. Okay. I want to know how many females. Thanks for contributing, Dominic. That was absolutely phenomenal. And I think somebody else sent that in the chat. Um, that's Olua, Boku, Olami. Count the numbers of male and count the number of females. Very simple. But you know what I love about what uh, Dominic said? He said, if I'm using something a bit more advanced, like an Excel or a Power BI, I'm going to do what? Count if. What does count if means? It simply means count the gender if the gender here is what? Male for male. Count if for female if the gender is what? Female. I don't need to do this myself. Excel already has these functions built in for me called count if. I don't need to have to take a calculator. I don't need to have to write any special. I don't need to have to calculate anything fantastic or advanced. Excel has these things done for me automatically. And that's what people need to understand when it comes to working as a professional who would work with data from time to time. Now, if I ask anybody on this call, because the data here is not complete. It's a screenshot and a subset of a full data set. But if I ask the question, how many people want to go to Berlin? How many people want to go to Berlin? Or what is the preferred destination? Let me even ask, let's ask, what is the preferred destination of people that fills this form, the preferred destination. Just type into the chat. What's the preferred destination? Latif says Berlin. Okay, so let's see more. Just type into the chat what you think. Okay, Femi says Berlin. A lot of, based on the data provided, I like that caveat, Oloa Buku, Olami. 
So based on the data provided is only Berlin, all right? Now, most of the time, this is what your eyes would see when you get a data set, when you get data either in a database or you're looking at um, Excel or a CSV file, your eyes would see more than this. You have to scroll and scroll to see more. And that's where, as a data analyst, your role is how do I convert these records into something that looks like a dashboard that is more visually appealing, that people can see and they know the answer to those questions. How can I take the raw data and convert it into something that is useful and meaningful? So I'm gonna ask that same question again. The same data I showed you is what was used to build this simple dashboard. And let's go back to my question. And I want you to focus here. Where is the preferred destination? Type into the charts. Where is the preferred destination? Okay. Berlin. Is this still Berlin? So a lot, everybody said Berlin the other time, but now the answers are changing. Okay. Paris. Olua Olua Bukun Olami is still giving the caveat. Based on the Finnish data, it is Paris. Absolutely. Paris is the preferred travel destination. And as a data analyst, we're going to do a lot of this. We're going to show at every point in time, okay, what is the data saying? Looking at the data the way it was made no sense. Everybody chose Berlin because that's what our eyes can see, but the data goes all the way down. You have to scroll and scroll for you to see. But how do you use a tool like Power BI, convert this data into a dashboard and show it this way, all right? And that's what a data analyst would do, all right? Very important for us to have an idea. So for people that work with data, you're going to do this a whole lot, okay? Now, what I'm going to go into is the skills you need to learn as a business analyst, as a data analyst, as a financial analyst, HR analyst, and so on. Okay, as a business analyst, which is one of the no code career path, which has a fantastic salary as well. In the UK, an average of about 52,500 pounds. In Canada, average of about 74,000 Canadian dollars. In the US, an average of about 85,000 US dollars. I will be remember, and you are taking notes, I said the business analysis career path cuts into three different areas or can be categorized into three different areas. The first one is the data analytics part. This is where you learn Excel, you learn Power BI, you learn SQL. So you see that dashboard I showed you in the previous slide, you know how to build that using Power BI, all right? And why it's important for the modern business analyst to have data skills, it's so you can apply to numerous type of jobs and also the current organizations hiring want business analyst that has a flavor of data analytics. And that's why it's important for you to learn this. Then you're going to learn your project management skills, project initiation planning, agile and scrum for projects, SDLC, stakeholder management as well. So you see these are what project management skills. You're going to learn how to use JIRA to track project deliverables while managing projects. So you're going to learn how to use Trello to manage your project team members, communicate to track their task and deliverables. You're going to use Confluence to collaborate on projects. Then you learn your core business skills, your process mapping, your requirements, fundamentals, elicitation, stakeholder analysis and engagement, and chat GPT for business analysis. And these are the BA skills you are going to pick up. So when you ask, how was Lois able to get a job as a project manager when she did business analysis? This, these are the reasons. Project initiation, Agile and Scrum, SDLC, stakeholder analysis and engagement. And she learned how to use Jira, Confluence, Trello, or projects, okay? And these are the things you'd learn how to use draw.io for your process mapping, how to map, processes, okay? You want to show how the process starts and how the process ends. 
You'd also learn that with Lucid charts. These are diagramming tools for you to map out processes and so on. The timeline for the BA program is for four months, two months in class and two months internship. Your internship is a real world end-to-end -end project where you would help the company build a web application project, a web application portal. So the HR department is manual and they need somebody to help them build a web app. You are the business analyst. You go into the company, you've seen that the processes are manual, there are delays, people cannot update their details, people would want to go and leave, they have to send emails. How do you optimize that process? And that's the project you're going to work on. And it doesn't matter where you're joining from. So Lois who got the job, everybody saw how excited Lois was. She completed our business analysis program. If you're in the UK, you're in Africa, similar time zones, the live classes are on Saturdays. You have a class 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., your time. And for those in Canada, for those in the US, you have a time that fits your time, a class that fits your time zone, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. mountain time. All right? So it doesn't matter where you are. If you're in the UK, for example, you can't join the class in the morning from 11 to 2. You can join the guys in Canada and the US, which would be around 6 p.m. your time. Okay, 6 to 9 p.m. So you have that flexibility of joining classes. And Sundays you have your, your self-paced, you don't need to come into a live class, uh, you know, eventually. Now, let's go to the data analyst. The data analyst, just like we saw, you saw the data, where is the preferred destination? Everybody chose Berlin. That's because we couldn't see the entire data. Human beings can't see and synthesize data just by looking at the data. You have to use tools and technologies to process and analyze that data. And for you to do that, the, the dashboard I showed you was built using Power BI. You're going to learn how to use Power BI, but you start from the fundamentals. If you remember what I said, how do you start? I've seen too many people making mistakes. You must start with what? Problem solving. So problem solving gives you the opportunity to ask the right questions, to know if you have the data to answer those questions. And if you don't have the data, just like that screenshot I showed you, how do you get data from your customers? How do you get data to answer the questions that you need to answer? How do you break problems into smaller parts using techniques like the mckinsey Missy model, mckinsey Missy model. What does Missy mean? Mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So how do you take a problem, break it down in a way that they are mutually exclusive? So you are breaking the problem into problem A, problem B, problem C. And when you've broken that problem into problem A, B, and C, they are collectively exhaustive in the sense that by the time I solve problem A, I solve problem B, and I solve problem C, I have solved the entire problem. There is nothing else left outside. And that's what the mckinsey Missy model helps you to do as a data analyst. You get to learn how to use the CRISDM framework, the five whys to do your root cause analysis and so on and so forth. You then get to learn Excel. You learn SQL. Somebody asked, why is SQL important? Structured query language, SQL. That's the language of databases. Organizations would store their data in a database. You need to know how to interact with that database, get your data from the database, and do analysis on that data in the database. And that's where SQL comes in. You learn Power BI, you learn Tableau for your data visualization, business intelligence. Then you learn data storytelling. How do you tell a story? I talked about when I worked as a management information system analyst, MIS. I was reporting directly to the owners of the company. They are billionaires in dollars. They don't have the time to look at, okay, I use this calculation. But when Dominic was speaking, he said, oh, you can use count if. They don't care about that. What they want to know is what happened, why did it happen? 
Okay, so you want to show your reports and communicate your reports in a compelling manner to a non-technical stakeholder, like a director of a company who doesn't know what Power BI is all about. You are the experts. You have to learn how to tell stories from the reports that you have built. You're going to learn ChatGPT, your AI for analytics, how to use ChatGPT to make your work better. And finally, Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric is a platform that enables you to do data analytics related activities, data science, data engineering, and so on. Your program is for four months, three months in class, one month in internship. Same like the business analyst, the classes are flexible. Saturdays, you have a live class. If you're in the UK, somewhere in Africa, Europe, similar time zones, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. your time. If you're in Canada, you're in the US, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. mountain time. And then on Sundays, you don't have a class. You watch videos and you're watching me do it, practice at your own convenience, okay? Data science is coding and math. We're not going to go into that. Data engineering is also coding and mathematics. We're not going to get into that, all right? So for the HR analysts and the financial analysts, you are both data analysts. The HR analyst is a data analyst. The HR analyst is also a data analyst. The difference between what they do and what the data analyst will do is the data analyst gets to work with different types of data, multiple different types, broader type of data without focusing on specific areas. When I was an MIS analyst, for example, I worked with data from the plants, the power plants that generates electricity. I get data from the power plants. I get data from customers. We analyze our customer demography. I get data on consumption, how much customers have consumed in terms of power. I get data from the finance team. You, you get from the sales team, the commercial team, you work with different types of data as a data analyst. But as a financial analyst, your focus is only on the financial records. So you are an expert on doing this. So as a data analyst, I'm working on, let's say I get data from the finance team and I'm doing my analysis. You as an expert in this area, who is a financial analyst, you would have better domain understanding of the type of analysis to do compared to the conventional data analyst who is not focused in on this particular area. So you, as a financial analyst or a data analyst, but your focus is only on what? The financial records. So you're helping companies optimize costs. Where are the areas we can optimize for costs? How do we, have, can I check the company's profitability, um, the return on equity, return on investments, the overall financial health of the company, all right? If there are changes in the environment, how do I, how does it impact our industry? If inflation goes up, goes down, unemployment rate goes up, goes down, how does this impact the company based on all the budgets we have created? If we want to acquire a new company, how do we value that company, valuation, build financial models to project the best case, the worst case, and the base case scenario? How do we allocate our capital, all right, based on the different objectives of the company based on the risk, based on the potential return, and if it's a strategic fit. So these are the things you do as a financial analyst. And I saw a question in the chat. Do I need to have experience? The answer is no. I studied industrial chemistry. I mentioned that at the beginning. Lois was an accountant and supply chain professional. Ungozi was a customer service professional. Abigail was a care worker. Um, was her name? Tony was a benefit analyst. So you would see professionals from career path that has nothing to do with data analysts, the business analyst career path, but then you get to learn the skills, all right? So as a financial analyst, you learn the data skills, and this is what makes you a data analyst. You learn problem solving, Excel, Power BI, SQL. Then you learn accounting fundamentals, financial analysis, financial modeling, 
evaluation, sensitivity and scenario analysis, and chat GPT for analytics. Four months, the, the total timeline, three months in class, and then one month internship. Saturday that we live classes, just like the data analysts. Mornings, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for those in Europe, UK, somewhere around Africa, similar time zones, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. for those in the US. The HR analyst focuses on people data. Okay, so just like the financial analyst who is a data analyst, they don't focus on all types of data. They focus on financial. The HR analyst, on the other hand, only focus on people data or people records. Okay, which factors predict employee turnover? All right, what has led to attrition within the organization? What part of the training budgets of this company drives the business results? When we hire from different platforms, from LinkedIn, from uh, recruitment consultants, from our websites, how, which one has given us the best performing employees? Have our best performing project managers come from LinkedIn or have they come from recruitment consultants? If we do that analysis and compare, and we see that the recruitment consultants give us higher performing employees, why don't we double down on that? So you are coming up with policies and strategies based on what the data says. When employees are bringing, when companies are bringing back employees back into the office, no more remote work, we're bringing you back to the office, you have to work from the office, is based on what? Have you done your analysis based on productivity? Has productivity increased? Has it dropped? These are the analysis the HR professional would have to do using data as the fundamental driver for these policies. So you learn your data skills, okay? Problem solving, except Power BI and SQL. Then you learn the core HR aspects, HR analytics and performance evaluation, HR metrics and life cycle, HR analysis and dashboarding, collaboration and report automation. I'm gonna generate a lot of reports, weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, quarterly, and so on. You don't want to build these things every time. You want to build a report that is automatically sent to the different stakeholders that needs to see those reports. You're going to learn how to build your case and create action. So outside the training, what happens next? Outside you working in an organization, how do you set up your own consultancy? How do you also ensure that within the organization you work in, you are able to sell your newly acquired skills, all right? Then you learn chat GPT for analytics. Then your program is four months, three months in class, one month internship. Okay, Saturdays is when you have your live classes, different timing based on your region. You have a, you have a time that fits your time zone. So you're not in the US joining classes at a ridiculous time. Okay, and then your self-paced classes happens on Sundays and throughout the week where you can watch your videos at your own convenience. So before I continue, I just want to do a very quick mic check. If you can still hear me and I'm still audible, type in a one into the chat. I got a notification and I'm not sure if the issue is from me. I want to be sure you can still hear me clearly. Fantastic, okay, brilliant. Thanks for that, Charles. So let's wrap up with the others. So now we have and of course, as a financial analyst in the UK, you are looking at fantastic salaries, 51 pounds, 51,000 pounds per annum. In Canada, about almost 70,000 Canadian dollars. In the US, about 74,000 US dollars. In As a HR analyst, it's a little bit lower than the financial analyst in the UK, about 38,005 pounds per annum. In Canada, about 71,000 Canadian dollars. In the US, about 62,000 US dollars. Now, as an agile project manager, people always wonder, how is this different or how is this the same to the conventional project management? As an agile project manager, you don't work on projects from beginning to the end. 
like the conventional project manager would work on, okay? You have a project plan, you bring all your resources together, you have a budget, you do your risk analysis, and then you start working on the project until you complete. The agile project manager works in helping the team deliver on the project in smaller manageable pieces. So if this project is gonna take us one year to complete, the Agile project manager would break it into smaller pieces and call them what? Sprints. So this would be your sprint one. This would be your sprint two. Sprints are delivered within the space of two to four weeks. All right, so let's say you are building an application, a mobile application, and working for a company that is trying to build a mobile application. And this mobile app for customers needs to have um, a login page, needs to have user profile page, needs to have a page for settings, okay? Your first sprint would be to do what? Build the login page. That will be the focus. And within the first sprint, you build the login page and you have something functional. By doing this, you are managing the way you deliver the project incrementally. So when you have the login page, you can deploy this to the customers that will use this particular app and they give you feedback in the form of user stories. Your feed, the feedback from customers will then enable you make that particular part a whole lot better and a whole lot tailored to the users. So by the end of all the different sprints we're going to have, you would have deployed the project at different intervals, which is called incremental deployment. And whenever you deploy, you are collecting feedback and making it better. Okay, so by the time you get to the end here, you have product market fits. You have a product that fits the market, what the market wants, and you can always make adjustments because you worked with the users all through conventional project management, which is waterfall, the waterfall methodology. You don't deploy incrementally. You complete the entire project, and you close out on the project. And it is at that time, people get to use what you have built. By then, it is too late to make changes. It is too late to make ad you know, adaptations to that particular project. And that's why the Agile methodology is called the adaptive methodology. It is adaptive. It adapts to what the customers want because you are deploying them in manageable, incremental pieces. That's what, the pro that's what the Agile Project Manager does. And the Agile Project Manager will do this using three key project management frameworks, the Scrum, Lean, and Kanban. Okay, so that's why the Project Manager can apply and get a job as the Scrum Master. And if you notice your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, it's not the same way it was three months ago, four months ago. You incrementally always have new features, new additions from time to time. The only way that is that was possible or that is possible is because it was built using the Agile methodology. So if you are a, if you are a project manager, you want to get a job in the tech ecosystem, you want to work on tech-related, manage tech-related projects, you want to learn the Agile methodology, okay? And you're going to learn skills in the area of understanding project management methodologies and structure, project management skills and communication, the Agile and Scrum framework, understanding extensively the Scrum framework, increments, the sprints, product backlog, which includes a Scrum artifact. You learn about the Scrum ceremonies, the Agile practices, how to use JIRA for tracking project deliverables, end-to-end, -end, and also learn how to use the Kanban boards, velocity metrics, burn-up metrics, burn-up, burn-down charts for your reporting and Agile metrics. You'd also learn the real-world application of the Agile Project Manager, 
how to scale the Scrum framework across multiple teams within an enterprise. And then we prepare you for the Scrum Master Certification. We prepare you for the exams as part of your curriculum. The program is for four months, three months in class, one month internship. You have classes both on Saturdays and Sundays, live classes on Saturdays, live classes on Sundays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Sundays. Yeah, the tools you're going to learn includes Jira, Trello, to track your teams and the tasks they have on projects, and confluence for collaboration. And finally, as a project manager, agile project manager in the UK, you are earning well about 53,000 pounds, about $97,000 in Canada, and over eight, six figures in the US, $120,000 in the US. And this is because of the demand for these roles in the US. And finally, you have a cybersecurity professional. As a cybersecurity professional, you are protecting the systems, the network, and the data of the organization to both internal and external threats, right? And by the time you are done with the project management program, the three areas you're going to focus on would be getting a job as a penetration tester, the pen tester, penetration tester, getting a job as a SOC analyst, the security operations center analyst, and also the GRC consultant. So these are the three major areas you can apply and get a job in. So you're going to learn introduction to cybersecurity, foundations of computing and networking, introduction to security principles, offensive and defensive cybersecurity, cryptography, which includes encryption, decryption, cyber threats and attack vectors, network endpoints, web and application security, cloud security, incidents response and forensics, and finally, cybersecurity policies and compliance. You do this for four months, three months in class, one month internship. You have your classes on Saturdays, all right? 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And on Sundays, you have your self-paced class. And these, and as, as a cybersecurity professional, you are earning fantastic salary. In Canada, six figures due to the demand for cybersecurity professionals in Canada. And in the US, six figures, 105,000 US dollars. In the UK, about 57,000 pounds per annum. As we wrap up our session today, remember, the technical skills alone would never get you the job. These are the mistakes you've been making, the mistakes a lot of people make. They're good with Excel, they're good with Power BI, but they don't have the employability skills, all right? And that's where Tenalytics helps you succeed. That's how we help you stand out. We focus not just on the technical, but also your employability skills. So when you ask, how are people successful when they join Tenalytics? What's that difference? And this is, these are the difference. This is the difference, the major difference we have broken into multiple parts, all right? Your CV, from your CV review to your CV revamp, we work with you on this. Your LinkedIn optimization, how to have the best LinkedIn profile, we help you do this. You have your, how to navigate the job market, where to apply, how to apply, we provide you with these resources. Interview prep, you have an interview, we prepare you. You have gotten an offer, you need a reference from us. The organization reaches out to us, we write a reference for you. You've gotten the job, you've, you're on a project that seems a bit difficult, you need that support system to lay your back on to help you navigate for the next one month. We have on the job support. Weekly mentorship sessions every Thursdays. And finally, Upwork optimization, all right? I've shared success stories with you already, but as I wrap up my session, I'm gonna share somebody's story with you, Olubemi. I'll come back to him to share his story. But before I come back to Olubemi, I'm gonna walk you through what it takes to join our program, the costs of joining the program, the investment you have to make to learn the technical skills, learn the employability skills, and join our next cohort 
starting on the seventh, the second of November, twenty twenty four. This is Busola who joined our program in March. Busola joined us, applied to jobs. We worked with her during our interview. She sent me this email on the sixth of June, informing me that Des Jardines would reach out to me for a reference. The day after, 7th of June, they reached out to me to say they need me to provide um, a reference for Busola. I provided the reference, sent in the reference, and about two weeks after, on the 24th of June, Busola got her offer, and she's currently working for Desta Deans as a performance analyst within the insurance sector here in Canada, okay? So the next cohort, like I said, starts on the 2nd of November and you have the opportunity to join the next cohort. And I talked about the amazing discount I have. Um, as at this time last weekend, the discount was for 20, but now the discount is for the first 15 people from this call that will be joining any of our programs. So you are joining the data analytics program, the business analysis program, the HR analytics, cybersecurity, instead of paying $750, you get an amazing discount of $150 and you get to pay just $600. The beauty about this is you also get to make your payments in three installments, installment one, installment two, and installment three. And I'll show you how you get to do that. The discount is a 20% off for the first 15 people to jump in from this call. So if, if this is something you've always wanted to do in 2024, you've always wanted to learn the skills, transition into the ecosystem, this is the best time for you to start. So I'm gonna show you and walk you through how to make payments very quickly. And then I'll take the questions that you have, okay? So for those who will be making payments, all you have to do you come in here, click on this link, and it takes you to the enrollment center. Once you get into the enrollment center, all you have to do is scroll down and select the program you want to join. So you see the 20% discount. Go select the program. I want to join the data analytics, the business analysis. I click on the program I want to join, and it takes me to the page. It doesn't matter where you are. If you are in the UK, you are in the US, you are in Canada, you can make payments on this platform, all right? The fees are in dollars, but you get debited in your local currency. You can do a one-time payment of 600, the discounted fee, a one-time payment, or you can do two payments of 300 per month, 300, 300, or you do your three monthly payments of $200 per month. So if I select this option, for example, and I click on proceeds to pay, it means I would secure my discounts and I ensure that I'm one of the first 15 people to enjoy this discount. I pay my first $200 today. The next one would be on the 7th, 17th of November and the final 200 will be paid on the 17th of December. And that's how you take advantage of the discounts we have for you. And also the three monthly installments system. All right. So if you click on proceed, it takes you to where you get to enter your name, enter your email, um, your phone number, and then you click on pay for products. Okay. It's important that as you enter your card details, you also ensure that you enter your email so once you've completed your payments, you receive an automated receipt into your email. The email comes with a link for you to complete your registration. So you fill all the details. For some of you, you might not, you might have commitments. You can't start on the 2nd of November, but you secure your slots and start in December. We have a cohort that would also start on the 7th of December. So we've had cohorts all through the year from January to November starting on the 2nd, and the final cohort for this year would commence on the 7th of December. So you can make payments, secure your discount slots, and still defer to start in December while filling that form that would come as a link to your email after completing payments. 
okay? I'm gonna take a pause right now. I'll take questions before we call it a day. Remember the discount is for the first 15 people to register, so take advantage. Make sure you also fill the attendance form so that you get all the details. You get the link for you to make payments and so on and so forth. The payment covers every single thing I've talked about today. All right, you get to join the class on the 2nd of November. You start your journey. You have your CV reviewed. You have your LinkedIn optimized. You have your interview prep sessions and all of that. Okay, so I'll stop, take questions, take a breather, take questions for like the next 12 to 15 minutes, and then we wrap up our session for today. So if you have a question, please use the raised hand icon, raise your hand, or you can type your question into the chat and then I'll pick your questions from there to answer. Okay, so I'm not sure I can see questions in the charts. Okay, I can see Dominic. Dominic says, I'm a health and nutrition database management and analyst, okay? Database management analyst. Who does reporting? Who does reporting, writing, and database management? But I'm interested in data analyst and project management. Is it possible to get this at analytics? Absolutely. I talked about the data analyst career path. I also talked about project management, the agile project management. But when you say who does report, report writing, I believe that's what you, you know, intended to ask and database management. Very fantastic question. Now, reports writing, or uh, let's call it reporting, okay? When you create reports and you have to share these reports to stakeholders that would have to work with these reports, what you want to do is a data analyst would build those reports from a database that exists and so on and so forth. So as a data analyst, if this is your question, uh, Dominic, as a data analyst, you are answering two questions at every given point in time in the organization. The first question you're answering is what happened? What happened? And the second question is why? Why did it happen? Okay, every business wants to know these two questions. So the tools, your Excel, your Power BI, your SQL, your Tableau, you are generating reports to help the business answer these two questions. How many customers did we get from January till October? Or Q1 to Q3, January to September. You want to show what happened. Now, when you see that you have some you know, um, increase, some parts, you had declines in number of customers, you want to also find out why do you have some places where there is an increase and why do you have sharp drops in other areas? You must answer these two questions as a data analyst. Now, when it comes to database management, database management, this is not the role of the data analyst in an organization. It is the role of a, data, of a database administrator or the role of a data engineer, all right? So as a, to manage the database is the role of a database administrator. Administrator, please pardon my handwriting, or the data engineer, all right? Now, but what are the fundamental skills required to manage a database? These are skills that would cut across the three major areas of SQL, SQL. SQL cuts across three major areas. You have the DDL, data definition language. You have the DML, data manipulation language. And you have, uh, let me write it here, the DQL, the data query language. Now, data definition, the language is what you use to create the database schema, the database structure itself, all right? So you are defining, you are using the create statements, okay? 
that DDL data definition, data manipulation is you've created a database, but you want to change certain things. So you are dropping, you are um, you are dropping as part of your the queries. I'm going to use queries like drop. You're going to use queries like alter because you are doing what? Manipulating. And then DQL is the data query language. This is what a whole lot of people do today. And they say they are SQL experts. So if all you can do is to query. So query simply means the database exists. You cannot change anything in that database. You don't know how to manipulate the database. You did not create the database. You are only what extracting your data from the database. That's just the DQL aspect. As a data analyst, you are going to learn the three. So while you are not practically learning to become a database manager or a database administrator, you have the skills to do the job. So if you see job vacancies that requires the database management skills, all you need to do is pick up on one or two other things, okay, and you'll be able to fit into that role easily. I don't know if that answers your question, but your second question on can you learn data, the data analytics program with us? Can you also learn project management? Absolutely, you can do that. So let me take from Paul. Paul is saying, okay, I should reply. I just have a question, Paul. I wasn't here for the entire class. Uh, secondly, I'm not in any way good in math or coding. My question is, is this for someone like me? What program best fits me, business analyst, Scrum master, both? because they both don't require mathematics or coding. That was how we started, all right? So what I would suggest you do, Paul, is the only two programs I presented that requires you to learn mathematics, you to learn um, how to code using Python, the data science and the data engineering role. As a data scientist, machine learning, forecasting, predictive analytics is hinged around statistics and then using your machine building your machine learning model using different algorithms also involves the use of python so you can't be a data a data scientist and not like math or you can't be a data scientist and not like coding you have to you have to be willing to do the two and as a data engineer as well you can't be a data engineer without coding okay um okay i think let me see if we have other questions. I've heard people talk about how hard is it to get jobs abroad in Nigeria, from Nigeria. Are you guaranteeing me once I join any of our program? We don't guarantee jobs because we don't give those jobs. What we guarantee is we give you everything you need to get that job. And our success story speaks for itself, okay? If anybody's guaranteeing you a job, it's, it's a bit shady because how do I tell you that you are going to get this job or get that job when I'm not responsible for hiring for that job. If you understand what I mean, it's like people saying that if you apply for a visa, I'm going to work with you and guarantee that you'll get the visa when they're not the visa officers who would review your application. Okay. So the best thing a visa officer would do for you, for example, is ensure that all the documents, everything you need to to structure your application is done properly. And that's what we guarantee you as well. I can't see your name anyways, but we ensure that all the skills you need, both the technical, the employability, your interview preparation, the right CV, your LinkedIn, they're properly structured for you to get that job. And that's why our participants have been successful in landing jobs all through, okay? I'm not going to take too much time with questions because I know you'd have tons and tons of questions. So what I'll do is we'll set up a clarity session. We call them clarity sessions. So the clarity sessions are where you've, you've heard about all the programs. You know what the one you feel would fit. Uh, Barakel, I'll come and take your question. I think your question will be the last one for today. So you have, a, you have an idea. Oh, do I do data? To, do I do data analytics? Do I do business analysis? You're not entirely sure for some of you. My advice is secure your discount, okay? Make the first deposit, secure the discount. So you know that no matter what, I'm a part of the first 15 
to get in to start on the 2nd of November. And then we have something we call the clarity session. The links will be shared with you um, in your WhatsApp group. If you are in the WhatsApp group, if you are not and you fill the attendance form, you are also going to get the link. You book a one, you book a slot with me. So you have maybe about five people, six people in the same session. So I, I take all those questions at once and I answer you directly. So you ask your questions and you get a direct feedback. That's in the clarity session. So you'd meet me there. You'd meet a Pemena, the co-founder, and other professionals to help you and guide you in selecting your best, the best decision. So once you make payments and you get the link into your email and you are filling the form, you'd see the option where you select the program you've paid for. One of the options there says, I need to speak with a professional, all right? So you'd see that option. So what this means is, oh, I'm not sure if I should do cybersecurity or HR analytics. I need to speak with a professional. Select that option and we'll schedule you in for a clarity session, all right? So let me take Barakel's question. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. So let's hear from you and then we'll call it a day. I'll show you one more success story and then we call it a day. Go ahead, Barakel. Let's hear from you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, go on, please. Where are you joining from? I'm joining from South Africa. From South Africa, okay, go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to get some clarity with regards to when you're saying the first 15. Is that the first 15 for all the courses or first 15 pro course? That's the first question. The first 15 for the data, the data analytics, first 15 for the business okay. analytics and so on. All okay. right, and then um, the next question I wanted to ask, if I could please see the, the price of the cybersecurity because I did not get that. The price, they're all the same. Okay, the fees okay. are the same. So it's, right. it's 750 that's the original fee, but okay. there's a 20% discount where you get to pay just 600 All right. All right? Okay. So once you follow this link, that's all you need to do. So you'd see, um, you'd, you'd make your payment and get debited in yes. South African rand, yes. which is the equivalent based on your current location. All, All right. right. So what I, what I've seen what I've seen happen most of the time is I get people that join the clarity session. Okay? okay. So they join the clarity session and then they tell me that they get their questions answered. Oh, I'm thinking data analytics. I'm thinking business analysis, uh, but I'm not sure. So I walk them through what they need to consider. Right, and they say, Oh, fantastic. I think I'll go for business analysis only yeah. to find out that the discount slots are gone. And then, rather than paying 200 three times, they yes. get to pay 250, which is the full amount three times for 750. So, that's why I always advise make the first payment, get into the clarity session, get your questions answered, and then we allocate a course to you at the end of the day. I don't know if, that's, if that answers your question. Um, it does. Last question, I promise. I'm so sorry. I wanted to ask, um, is there a difference between a um, cloud security engineer and a cloud security analyst? Brilliant. I think oh, they're pretty much the same. Okay. okay. Cloud security is a subset of data engineering. Okay. All right. So as a cloud security engineer, so whenever you hear engineer, engineering, engineering is, is mo mostly about building, okay? Yeah. So you are building infrastructure, you are building the um, cloud infrastructure that will store yes. the data. So you use technologies like AWS, Amazon Web yes. Services, yes. GCP, Google Cloud Platform, or yes. Microsoft Azure, all right? Mm -hmm. So when you hear engineering, it's more about building. When you hear analysts, analysts is more about you working with what has already been built. Okay. 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 But what I always advise is this nomenclature is a function of what the company is looking for at that point in time. Okay. So you you'll see a role that says Excel experts, Microsoft Excel experts. Yes. You'll see you'll see a role that says pathology data analysts. Now, what you want to do is look at the job requirement. What does it say? 
So yeah. as a cloud security analyst, you are most likely going to be working with cloud infrastructure okay. to get your data from there to do your analysis. That's what I have at the top of my head. I can't tell yes. you, Katya, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Engineering, when you hear cloud engineering, what it means is your role would center around building the cloud infrastructure, how data would move across the organization into that cloud platform, either AWS, GCP, or Azure, and how easy it would be to access that data whenever anybody needs to access the data. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, yes, uh, it makes sense because um, I have I've done the AWS um, Cloud Practitioner and Solutions Architecture Associate as well as the professional. So my mind was always towards the cloud security engineer. And so when I saw the um, cyber security analyst, I just thought I'll get some clarity just to see how I can align myself. Okay. All right. Fantastic. All right. Thanks for joining us today. And you know, your questions were very good. Thanks for asking. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Nathaniel is asking, uh, I would like to take the two program FA and DA. Does that mean I'm paying 1200 with a discount? Yes. Okay. Elijah has asked, has responded already. Uh, $600 is for the program. Okay. That's still Nathaniel. Um, thank you. I already registered for Agile Project Management calls. But it seems I'm getting enticed with the data about analytics. Okay, Femi, so what you can do is fine. It always happens. And that's because all the career paths are fantastic. It's always difficult to say, okay, I'm going to go for this one or go for that one. But when you look at the fundamental, the criteria that we've, we've used to select, which was where, how I started our session today, you realize that it doesn't matter what you choose the fundamentals are the same. You can learn them within the space of three to five months. You can, the demand is high, so you can transition easily. It doesn't matter what you've done before. And finally, the salaries are also impressive. Okay, so these are the three building blocks, the foundation that all these programs stand on. Okay, so it's a matter of choice. I want this, I want that. What we've also built into the program is you always have the opportunity to change two weeks into the start of your program. So let's say you started with project management, agile project management, and oh, I, I think I've concluded now that data analytics is what I want. You can change after two weeks and we work with you to bring you up to speed. But anything after two weeks, you can't change anymore, all right? But if at any point in time you still have questions, just um, send us an email, send us a message, join one of the Clarity Sessions, and I'll be happy to work with you, uh, Femi, to answer any questions you have, to help you collect those doubts. But trust me, most people find themselves here, oh, everything sounds brilliant, sounds great. I want to become everything, but it's always one step at a time. We've had people who completed cybersecurity, they came back, sorry, data analytics, they came back to do cybersecurity. Why? because this particular gentleman completed data analytics and in his company, a role became available for a cybersecurity analyst and he got to find out the salary and the salary was way more than what he was earning at that time. So he came back to us. Uh, he's still within our cybersecurity program at the moment, trying to pick up the skills so he can apply to those type of jobs. All right, so as we wrap up today, I want you to listen to, I mentioned this earlier, I want you to listen to Olubemi. He's a fantastic professional. He's currently on his second role in Canada, doing amazingly well, joined our um, data analytics program, but I want you to listen to him, okay? I'm going to play his video. It's about two, three minutes, and then we call it a day, all right? Whether you have a thesis, capstone, Since at least um, hi everyone. So uh, my background, I study chemistry up to master's degree level. Then you know Nigeria now. I find myself with the bank. So um, I did banking for about four years. And when I got when I got my PPR in March, I knew uh, I don't want to do marketing again when I come to Canada. 
tired of targets. I want to switch to something new. So um, before then, I'd been taking some Udemy courses on data analysis. And I remember when I met Adiza, I told him, uh, I know this data analysis. I just need something like an internship. And it was like, okay, just go through this course. It's going to help you own your skills. I still remember the exact words you used. So um, I joined the team. And then I actually I discovered I don't know much. <laughs> so um, because um, what they didn't just go into the tool. Um, they started with um, problem solving, which is actually very, very key. Um, knowing the why behind the tools you're using, behind knowing the why is very, very important, not just going into the tool. So we started with problem solving, and um, then we moved to Excel. The Excel part really got me hooked, and I felt like, wow, I really needed to do this. So I made a sacrifice. I knew I was going to leave. Nigeria soon. So I resigned from my job to face it squarely. So aside from the weekend classes, I was doing extra learning and everything. And um, um, just um, about two weeks ago, I, before contacting the days, I had passed my uh, my attitude test and first level interview with the company I applied to. So I quick, uh, when they contacted me that uh, I had been shortlisted for the technical interview, I quickly sent a days a message that, oh God, it don't happen though. How will you help your boy? So he actually, we actually spent over one hour together and uh, he prepared me for the interview. Some of the questions he asked were, were repeated on the interview there. Well, some of them, there's a way you just tweak that answer you guys have prepared to the interview, to the interviewer's question. There's a way, I don't know, there's a way that thing will just fit in. You won't know how, but there will, there will be a way it will fit in. That thing has happened like twice now. I don't know how that thing has happened, but anything you've prepared, you will find a way of using it on that interview day. So um, we spent about um, one hour, 30 minutes, prepared me, gave me some materials to prepare with, and um, I did the interview. So they're not just going to leave you hanging after the session. They're going to help you prepare with interview. And uh, when it got to the recommendation part, um, he wrote a really strong recommendation letter from even seeing that recommendation letter, I will employ myself. It was really, really strong. And um, to, uh, after, Okay, I remember I missed out this. After the technical interview, they gave me a case study to solve and return to them. I also contacted him and uh, he helped me look at some of the questions and uh, he gave me ideas and I put that in and I submitted. Two hours after the case study, they just sent me a mail to send me three references. I, I, I To send them three references, so I quickly contacted him. He wrote that powerful reference for me and uh, today I got the job as a business data analyst here in Edmonton, Canada. So um, it's really beautiful and it's worth it. Because if you look at the remuneration part, it's actually 1,000% of what I was earning in Canada. So to break it, to what I was earning in Nigeria, I mean, to break it down is like times 10 of what I was earning back then in Nigeria. So it's really, really worth it. I started, I started with analytics in April and um, this is just September. So I don't think six months of sacrifice is too much to get to that next level which I just started anyway. So thank you guys, that's all about me. All right, so that's Ulubeni's story. Absolutely phenomenal, professional. Yes, yes, I know, I'm aware, Nusa. Ulubeni got his skills from us. So anything you see Ulubeni doing today, he picked it up from Tenalytics, and he's a great guy. I mean, Ulubeni is a fantastic, when I came into Canada in January, and this is the beauty about networking, he was one of the first persons I visited here in Canada. So I have worked, I've been his mentor, he's learned from me. When I moved to Canada, we we, we tried to catch up because at least we're in the same province in Alberta. So Ulubemi is a fantastic professional. You heard him, you heard all the things he said himself. So I'll call it a day right here at this point in time. Connect with us. Follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on, on Instagram, go on YouTube, watch more videos, see the amazing stuff we've been doing over the last few years and see how you can also key into the tech ecosystem. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Have an amazing, amazing time. And thanks for spending time with me on a Thursday evening. <laughs> well, it's the afternoon my time anyways, but thanks for joining me today. And we look forward to having you guys start your journey with us. Thank you very much. And I hope you had an amazing time today. I'd love to see you in the class. I'd love to see you get started. Cheers, everybody, and have an amazing time.